Hey everybody, welcome to the Family Renewal Podcast. We're coming at you in a little different format today. This is new for me. Uh, we have never done a video version of the podcast. I'm going to be putting this on YouTube. We're going to start a YouTube channel where you can watch our podcast on YouTube. And you can also still listen to us in all the many places that you do via our audio podcast. But we're doing a first, not only is this a first video podcast for us, but this is also the first time we've ever had a guest on the Family Renewal Podcast. And I had wanted the very first guest uh, that I ever have on the podcast, if I could make it work, to be Todd Wilson. And so we are both, as we're recording this, hunkered down in the great COVID-19 quarantine of 2020. And we are trying to do our best as homeschool conference speakers to figure out how to not conference speak. And so uh, this time we are going to be talking about, um, uh, about Todd and his ministry. I want to introduce him to you. And not that he necessarily needs any introduction, but there could always be those few people that haven't had the internet before this week. And they may not know who Todd is. And so I want to have him tell you a little bit about who he is and what he does. Uh, and then the next episode, we're going to do a second episode, and we will talk about some dad and, and husband issues and men, men issues. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, which I probably don't because I'm quite old, I think we met in Indianapolis at the IAHE convention 15 years ago-ish. It, it was a while back. I was thinking maybe it was at that little conference in northern Indiana oh, um, at, a, at a church. I don't know. What oh, was it? I, I don't know been. what it was called. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there was called. one in South Bend many, many, many years ago. We may have met there for sure. I can remember uh, talking out in the lobby. So may okay. I don't know if that was the very first one, but that was pretty close. Yeah. Um, so I remember at that time, I think you had a book that you had just written. You were looking for a publisher. Um, I had just done some marketing consulting for Moody like the week before, and I remember mentioning maybe you could connect with Moody. I think you may have already been working on that at that time. Right, right. And so uh, that book, I think, ended up being published by Moody. And then eventually you ended up publishing a lot of resources yourself. But I, I don't remember, were you an official ministry at that time? Like, did you have the name Family Man and all that? Or were you still uh, working, working through developing that? At, no, we were, we, were, we were a ministry, whatever ministry is, you know. Uh, we, put, we put ministry on the title anyway. Yeah, Family sure. Man Ministry, um, you know, and we've never been a not-for-profit. We've always been a little for-profit. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we didn't know anything. We yeah. just started. and. Yeah. This is what we've been doing for, for 18 years. So your background, like if I remember correctly, and, and you'll have to fill in the gaps here because I, I could have a lot of this narrative wrong, but <laughs> if I remember correctly, you went to Bible College in Indiana uh, at Grace Bible College, right? And well, then, I went to Purdue University and then I went to Grace Seminary. You're right. Grace Seminary. So, okay, yeah, wow. Uh, so you went to Purdue. So I'm a lot there. smarter than you yes. probably took me for. That's right. Didn't, <laughs> didn't know I was speaking to piled high and deep. Here. I I usually <laughs> like to put all my credits right at the beginning. <laughs> I know. Have all the alphabet <laughs> soup. Exactly. <after> exactly. <laughs> so then you went into pastoring, right? I was a pastor for about ten years. That's amazing. And, uh, and we loved it. You know, it wasn't a. It wasn't like I, I got sick of it. It wasn't like we had a bad experience. It was a great experience. But um, I was in a car wreck about somewhere in the middle of it. It was a pretty bad car wreck. I was at home and I had some time and I started writing. Um, I didn't think I'd ever, I never wanted to be a writer. I, you know, I was barely a reader. Uh, you know, just the different, like, look at all the books behind Israel and look all the junk behind me, you know. <laughs> so that was, you know, and that's who I, I, I was. But I had started writing. I saw the kind of the power and I wanted to tell stories to my kids to teach them some truths in kind of an engaging way. Mm. And uh, after a while, you know, I, we had had some interaction between some people who are magazine people and book people and agents and, and uh, a lot of great feedback. Um, and, but I was starting to get, feel that pull, like, mm. you know, I don't like taking time away from my family, even though all my kids were asleep. But I thought, and my wife was asleep. I thought I should be in bed and laying next to her, not typing away on a computer somewhere, even if we're not engaged or talking. And uh, my wife and I can, I can remember being on a, on a summer vacation at our family's lake cottage. 
And she was just saying, you know, I've been crunching the numbers. She said, um, I think we've got about $7,000 worth of savings. Um, and we had just made, found out we had made a tax error. Um, we had never gotten a refund in our whole married life up until that point. And we got a $10,000 return because it was a, there was an error. Wow. And she goes, I think we could do it for a year, wow. you know, or see, we could just try. Give it a shot. And, and we did. We stepped out. And really, my wife was not the instigator. She was behind me. She mm -hmm. was cheering me on and said, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stepped out. We didn't even know what it was going to look like. I thought maybe I'd write the great American novel and they'd come knocking on my door. Hey, Todd, <laughs> when's the next one coming out? But yeah. they didn't care about the first one. <laughs> so, um, but we, I had, I had for a long time had a passion for dads. And, uh, and my brother-in-law said, hey, why don't you just start a little email? So I went to my parents' church directory and I took all the emails because this, you know, this was new. There was no social media. I took all their all the emails of all the men and then I on my church and I wrote them a little I think it was less than a hundred. Um, and I said, Hey, I'm starting this thing. If you'd like to be a part of it, just don't get off. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're still doing that. It's probably the the, the biggest thing I do. Um, and we've just been on this incredible ride mm -hmm. uh up until the last three weeks ago. <laughs> and yeah. then, you know, the ride went, ah <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, well, I was going to ask you because, uh, you know, you have a focus on men specifically, uh, you know, not that, uh, not that you're not broader than that, but that's right. been kind of how you've been branded. I think though, um, working in pastoral ministry, I would assume would have given you an insight into, and we're, I'm going to steal a little bit of the thunder from the next broadcast. Sure. So I, I want to get into the issue of this a little bit deeper in the next episode, but just, um, like I was at a event in Ohio a while back. I was speaking all weekend at a church doing like Friday night seminar, Saturday seminar, and then preaching on Sunday morning. I know you do the same kind of thing uh, oftentimes for churches, uh, but somewhere in that, I think it was su Saturday morning, the pastor wanted to have like a men's prayer gathering at the church. <laughs> it's one of those like, we're going to be there at seven o'clock in the morning. And of course, I'm thinking I got to speak all day. You know, all right, right. Those, you know, you, you want to be there, right? To help, help facilitate this and lead this. Like, sure so, <laughs> anyway but we get there and there's like eight guys there which you know i wasn't disappointed but the pastor was pretty disappointed because you know they have what 40 50 60 guys i don't know in the church not a huge church but i think he felt like you know half of the guys at least should have shown up and at any rate um i just have seen a lot of past it's super hard to get men engaged in activities it's hard to get them involved in programs and so forth so was that part of perhaps what led you to to trying to reach out to dads as things that you saw as a pastor just to you know I, I don't know um that, that's a because i i is one of those men you know i'm one of those guys when my wife says hey we're gonna do something i'm like ah do we have to go you know and and that's what i when pastors are always disappointed, I'm like, do you even know men? <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you think they were going to come for this? Um, you know, really what my desire was, I just wanted to engage with dads at whatever level it was. And just to get them to choose the good stuff, because I just saw dads choosing stuff that doesn't even matter, you know, and you get to the end. And I, I can remember, I don't know, maybe more so than I, I, I don't have time to do it anymore, but I would watch like these biographies on the um, PBS, you know, they didn't have it. We didn't have cable. We didn't have the history channel. So, but I like biographies about people and, and, you know, and they were always, of course, you know, they do biographies on people who've done something significant, whether that was invent something or, you know, a part of history, or maybe they were a, a political figure. And I mean, across the board, it did not matter what they did. Always, almost always, at the very end, they would say things like, you know, I probably wasn't a very good father. Or if I had to do that again, maybe I would have spent a little more time with my family. <laughs> I'm going to have to say goodbye to this person. Um, and, you know, and, and that was a pattern over and over and over again. And I thought, why do we keep saying those things? Sure. And nobody makes changes. 
you know, this was at the time of promise keepers, mm -hmm. you know, and they were filling stadiums with all these men. And, you know, they had the hats on, they had the shirts on, but the golf courses weren't closed down afterwards. The jobs didn't look for, you know, uh, the companies didn't have to look for new people because people made really tough choices. They just kept on going business as usual. And I just thought, you know, I'm not going to blow it as a dad. And if I can encourage dads along the way not to blow it as a dad, I'd like to do that as well. But I care more about me not blowing it than encouraging yeah, yeah. the other dads to not yeah, blow it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because some of those biographies <laughs> were on people that you would know, everybody yeah. would know, yeah. who do, you know, who share the gospel. Yeah. And they say the same things. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. So that's kind of what took me in that direction. Plus, yeah. you know, it was at the time, maybe a side note, we had five children at the time. So we left this church with nothing. I think I made $2,000 the first year. And by the way, that, that $17,000 my wife said we could live on, we never touched our savings. We just didn't have to. God took care of us. Amen. Um, but I don't know where I was going to go with that. But um, uh, what was so I went saying? Full, you went full-time into speaking and writing. And the kinds of events that you do, I know we do a lot of conferences together. I mean, we've done dozens probably of conferences over time. And, um, but you do other events as well. I, I know on occasion I have uh, preached at a church on Sunday morning and they said that you were there a month before and oh, preached yeah. at the same church. So I was like, yeah. I didn't even know Todd did that. Um, I have been to family camps and people said, yeah, we had Todd and his family at our family camp last year. And so I know you do those kinds of things. Um, what are some of the, the events that you like the most? And if there's like people out there who are thinking, well, we're looking for a speaker and boy, we would love to have Todd come. What, what are just some of the variety of events that you've done? You know, I, I like, I, I like them all. And we speak at, we speak at men's events and couples events and uh, family events and church Sundays and um, all, you know, banquets. And I, you, you got a funeral, you need me to do it. I can do that. You know, have you ever done youth events? <laughs> That's, I'm not a youth event guy. I have not. So I won't, I'm Good not even going to attach thing. my name to that one because as soon as I do, they'll go, Oh, we need a youth figure. Those are, those are tough as a speaker. Those are hard. Those are, teenagers have an aversion to ever affirming an adult. Right, right. So they just sit there with this look like, you're not exactly, do exactly. <laughs> you're going to have to do better than that. Yeah. So, so I, I like that. I, I really like, um, I, I I like all church events. Um, I like gathering people. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, my message is often the same. It's always about relationships. It's always about fathers and mothers. And I mean, I go to, uh, I've spoken in the jail and I still talk about those same things because mm -hmm. their needs are still, those are the really the needs of every believer. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, there, I, I, I'm not a, uh, uh, you know, evangelist. I'm, I'm usually talking to uh, Christians, um, mm -hmm. but even non-Christians um, who might be in that group. I'll tell you, if you prepare their hearts towards their children, yep. you prepare them for the gospel. Um, I think that's even maybe, maybe proto-evangelism. You sure. know, that's right there. So, uh, you know, I love doing men's events, but it's hard to do a men's event because you get it. You, like you said, you, they're like, oh, we're going to have a men's event and make it open to the public. And I'm like, you're very optimistic, you know, <laughs> uh, because they're just so. But if you can get their wives, then the wives bring their husbands. Yeah. Then you have a great event. Um, so, I, so, you know, I like I like talking to lots of people. Yeah. So if people want to book you for an event, they can go to your website. What is your website? Uh, familymanweb.com. Uh, mm -hmm. We're easy to find. Uh, and there's a thing right on there that uh, says speaking, I think it says up at the top. Um, and, you know, if you live close, uh, I'm in northern Indiana, if you're within a couple hundred miles, uh, we can usually do that pretty easy. Uh, it doesn't involve any hotels, uh, unless it's a Sunday morning or something like that. And yeah. uh, uh, it's just basically a love offering. Well, for those who have never heard Todd speak in person at a live event, um, Todd is one of the most dynamic speakers that I know. He captivates an audience. People always leave saying that they were encouraged, that they were challenged. And, uh, you know, Todd's one of those guys that, that kind of has a reputation for using humor and, and people enjoy that, which is great. But he also has a lot of substance. There's a lot of depth to what he says and people can come away 
uh, convicted. He's, it's one of those things where, on the one hand, you know, he's kind of kicking you in the butt, but he's but he's making you laugh too. And so you're like, oh, I didn't like that. Oh wait, ah, that was funny. You know, and so you're kind of caught in between. It's sort of like, oh, I don't know if I. Oh, well, hey, hey, you know, he's a good guy. You know, <laughs> so it's it's interesting how you're able to uh, to slip stuff in there that's meaningful and that that challenges uh, men especially to advance. You know, and to to not just stay complacent with where they are, um, but you're able to do it in a way that really resonates and connects with them and that encourages and affirms moms. And um, so also you have a podcast. Uh, your podcast is far better known than mine. So I assume everybody knows you. Have a oh, podcast. yeah. I mean, it's right up there. That's someone said the other, not the other day, but within the year, they said something like, oh, you have a podcast? And I'm like, yeah. Not everyone can have a podcast. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're pretty easy to start. Um, yeah, we have one called The Family Man Show uh, for dads. And we also have one called The Smiling Homeschooler for homeschooling moms. Um, they're both weekly. You can find them on wherever you get your podcasts. Um, yeah, and I you know, you check that out on your YouTube channel as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So let me just go look for Family Man, Todd Wilson, and up will come videos they can right, watch. Right, right, right. Um, and so, uh, what, what about new stuff? What's, uh, what's new on the product line for you, uh, recently? You know, uh, we're, we're, we're I saw you wrote a novel. I didn't even know that. I wrote a novel a long time ago. That was one of the, that was the, almost the first thing I ever wrote. Um, and, uh, uh, it's a great, it's an amazing story, but people don't want novels from me. You know, they really want to tell me how to be a good husband. Tell me how to be a good dad. Tell me how to be a good homeschooler. Um, which I love doing, but I like the, I see the value in stories. Sure. And so we've done a lot of, we've done Christmas stories, Easter stories. Um, you know, we're, we're working on one right now. That's maybe a devotional for, for families just to yeah. tell a simple story, um, with a little point. Um, but, and we're actually, we're putting on that, that novel on audible right now. So, uh, someone's nice. doing that for us and nice. Um, but we're working on stuff. In fact, we're using this downtime to, to work on a few projects. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm not one of those guys who just loves cranking out books. Yep. Um, uh, they're just, there's, I mean, you see how many books are on your shelves right now. I don't know if the world needs another book from Todd Wilson. Um, but I am always looking for ways to engage parents maybe in a, in a new way. I like those little short snippets. I like, I like, like a, we send our weekly email to lots and lots of dads because it's, it's easy. It's not preachy. It's just one dad encouraging other dads where the good stuff is. And, well, it's cliche, uh, but it's true that you got to find something with short enough chapters that the men can read it in the bathroom. Exactly. And exactly. Books, facilitate and, that uh, we yeah. even have one called the, the bathroom book of fathering. I mean, there you it, go. It, we knew it. I wanted to call it <laughs> toilet tales for dads, but everybody thought, Oh, that sounds terrible. And I'm like, I should have gone with that. I should have gone with it. it. <laughs> Stick to your guns next time. <laughs> That's right. But uh, there's other things that people don't know that you have. You have a, a family board game. We do. You know, I didn't start out to get in the, in the game business. Uh, I will never do it again. Um, but we have a Christmas game because uh, we like that window of opportunity that families have for a whole month. You know, there aren't many, there aren't any other times that we do that where we just kind of set aside a month to do family stuff. And well, you could start a COVID-19 game. <laughs> you could you could it, it'll be over by the time we get it out <laughs> very hard to market <laughs> I'll, I'll get like ready for the, the next one i created yeah so exactly this is <laughs> yeah somebody probably is creating one for the next pandemic because i'm afraid that we're going to have them more often now once we've hold, done this hold once on to it and wait for the moment so <laughs> let's just change the title. a lot of swag too you got hats we do shirts. well yeah one of the things that i should have brought up and i didn't i've got one i can almost reach from here i don't even even know if you can see it but um this says hashtag staying married um uh you know a few about two years ago uh, i just was at this point in in frustration because you know the world was changing so much i mean uh really in five years we've gone from you know normalness to bizarreness you know where on almost every even the kids shows now have these you know these cleverly disguised couples who are husband and husband and wife and wife. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I was like freaking out. I'm like, do I need to get like a million men? We march on Washington. And I just got to the point because it sounded too exhausting. I said, I'll just stay married. You know, I'm going to stay married. And so we started this hashtag staying married. We, we've 
sold lots and lots of shirts. Um, and I envision husbands and dads um, and wives, you know, out there in the world, you know, with their face masks on, just saying, I'm staying married. Um, we're not telling others to stay married. We're just making a declaration that I'm going to, because I'll tell you, I know people that, you know, you're all, you all know that, you know, we, we traveled these trails together and now they're not married anymore. And mm. I'll tell you, nothing else matters after that. You know, you, it's hard to be a good anything after that, whether you want to be a businessman or a father, you know, when that relationship is broken, in fact, I was just talking to a guy two days ago. And he was talking to a friend of ours who his wife left and um, they were talking and, and this man who was still married said, oh, he said they were going through a hard time, you know, just he said, I just feel like we're getting grumpy, you know, all the time. And the husband whose wife left said, that's what I wanted for us. I wanted us to grow grumpy together, you know, and really because that's it, you know, what I talk about. Uh, you know, people say I'm funny, but I don't feel funny. I feel what I am is real. Mm -hmm. I say it's hard being married, but it's worth it. It's hard being a dad, but it's worth it. You know, I just don't play those games mm -hmm. that it's, oh, if you follow my four points, you can do it because I'll tell you, we've tried the four points, you know, yeah, yeah. and I get to a point three and I'm like, I can't do it. This is too hard. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so we I just hope, keep going. I hope we can get into that a little bit more in our next episode, because we want to try to tackle some issues. And I know the marriage issue is one that you're uh, very strong in addressing. And I appreciate your admonition to couples to stay married. And, and, and I think that message is so needed. You know, just even, even with that, that T-shirt, people can really make a, a statement uh, to themselves, mostly. You know, as you walk around during the day with the stay married T-shirt, you're reminding yourself of what's really important and how yeah. valuable that is to your kids and so forth. But we want people to be able to connect with you and to be able to stay in touch with you and know what you're doing. And your email list is one of the most important ways that I know of doing that. And it's one of the ways that I keep in connection with uh, where you are and what you're doing. And it's one of the ways that I, I find out where the RV has broken down. And <laughs> Which is just about everywhere we go. It was like a photo of Todd with his legs sticking out from under the RV. <laughs> right. South Dakota. It's like, oh, okay, they're in South Dakota now. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, how do people get on your email list? You know, it's super simple. Again, just go to our website, paymomanweb.com. You can sign up there. I think uh, even a drop down will come there and pester you one time anyway. Uh, or if, again, if you're a homeschooler, a uh, homeschooling mom, you can go to the smilinghomeschooler.com. You can do the very same thing there, and we'd love to encourage you. And then um, you don't do a lot of social media, but you have a little bit of social media presence. Uh, where can people connect with you in social media? You know, you can find us on Facebook. Um, I'm just too tired to do anything else. I'm almost too tired to do Facebook, too, but uh, you can find us there. Or you can just come to my house. <laughs> you just come to my house, and I'll talk to you. <laughs> it's so funny because I remember like five, six years ago, everybody telling me all these uh, social media platforms that if I didn't get on it, basically the world was going to end. And, uh, you know, like if you don't, if you don't use Periscope, like you're going to be non-existent in five years. And I'm like, is anybody use it? Like, what even is that now? Is that right. thing? You know, so uh, fortunately, uh, social media platforms come and go, but uh, people like us, we just kind of keep plotting. And that's right. We're like the rocks that you trod on. That's right. <laughs> year after year, decade after decade. That's so, right. Are they still alive? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so the next episode, we're going to talk about teenagers. We'll see how much time we have to get through this, but some some guy issues. I want to talk about mentoring a little bit. Uh, teenagers, I know you've had a ton of experience on that in the last what eight, ten years. Uh, and so we want to talk about that and then um, just some other issues that relate to us as Christian men, husbands and fathers. So we will end this episode of the podcast and your website one more time. Familymanweb.com. Familymanweb.com. Make sure you get over there. Check out Todd's books and resources. Uh, there are some wonderful gifts there for husbands that you can buy for your wife that will encourage her. Um, there are some wonderful gifts, wives, that you can get for your husband that he'll find enjoyable and that he will want to look at and read. Uh, and so uh, great resources for the whole family. And again, some fun swag that you can 
you can wear and share and uh, great giftable ideas. So I hope you will support Todd and his ministry. And you know, right now, uh, if you get to listen to this soon, um, you know, we're in this lockdown and Todd does this for a living. This is how he supports his family. He's full time with this. And um, I know as that Todd feels the same way that I do, that he would like to to be financially able to keep doing this next year and the year after. And so you buying things on his website, that helps him. Uh, buying on Amazon doesn't help him as much. Please buy from his website. Uh, make sure that you support him and his family financially. Uh, I, I you know, know that uh, he has a desire to do this for as long as God wants him to. And your financial support and purchasing their materials goes a long way towards that. So uh, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening and join us on the next episode of the Family Renewal Podcast. God bless.